Hello there ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the final one of these faction reviews of uh, the first set of gate ruler cards, so this is going to be uh, GBO1 and GSO1 and some promos. Uh, before we get started, let me give my usual preface. I'm recording this about a month after the game has come out, so of course everything I'm saying, uh, keep that in mind, it's very possible I will be wrong about things, likely even. Um, less so because, basically because the game is so new that um, I'm still learning the fundamentals to an extent, uh, whilst I feel reasonably confident in the things I'm saying, and certainly when we get the game in English and you're all learning it for the first time, this will be useful, um, it's worth considering that some of the things I say may, uh, in hindsight, be uh, naive. That being said, let's go ahead and get started. And in today's video, as you no doubt read from the title, we're going to be talking about Yomajin Front. And this is my personal favourite aesthetic. Um, that's a lie. Uh, I really like Wonderverse as well. But um, as a, as a, uh, as a weeb, I am very into the whole Japan thing. So uh, <laughs> I am, I'm very into it. I like the whole uh, your sort of old aesthetic with a lot of the cards as well. Uh, and also, this is... I mean, it's just really good. All of the factions are really good. I'm going to stop wasting time and let's get started. Captain Omega. I underrated this card so badly. Um, okay. Reasons this card is godly. Three strike and hard destruction on counter and on overdrive. It's, eel, it's also a warrior, which means you could use it for Genesis uh, if that ever came up. Um, unfortunately, you uh, you cannot Genesis into this to use the effect, because that would be really nice. This card is cracked, it's really good, it deserves to be a legend. This card is even more cracked. It is my opinion this is the best legend in the game, purely because of its versatility. I think this will be a card that from now until the end of time will be uh, considered in every deck that plays red. I, I just don't see a way this is not considered, you know, outside of something with a ruler that was like your TD and OD and CNT don't activate or something. Basically, any deck that can use this will be considering it. It may not fit into every deck, and there are good reasons for why it wouldn't. Primarily, you do not have good counters in the deck to justify using this, but by and large, I'm pretty sure this is, this is, this is definitely my personal pick for the best legend in the game. So yes, it's good. Kamigakari. This card is interesting. So it stats all right. Two strike is nice. Uh, the overdrive is uh, this. This wording is actually wrong. You actually need to destroy your card to destroy the other. So that is not ideal. However, the fact that it can destroy anything is important and worth considering. And I would say that. This is a card that I don't think is too strong at the moment, but I do think there is strong future potential for this. Do not sort of sleep on the f on the strength of popping anything. The versatility of that, and the fact that it's just such a lack of hard destruction in the game at the moment, uh, really does make this uh, something to keep in mind. On top of that, obstacle is a bitch of a keyword, and is it's just it's just a terrifying terrifying keyword that's sort of, unless your opponent hard destroys it, it's going to neg your opponent in some way, which means this is a very safe card to put uh, in the center most of the time. We'll come back to that. But yeah, this card is uh, also very, very strong. And I did also underrate this a little bit uh, in my ranking the four stars, but I still do think it's one of the worst ones. Gashadokuro, uh, on the other hand, is one of the best ones. This card is cracked for so many reasons, uh, the main ones to keep in mind though is this card is a defensive nightmare to deal with and an offensive nightmare to deal with. There's a reason it is uh, so restricted in its use at the moment. And by restricted I mean basically only Apprentice. And Highlander of course, you, you play this in Highlander. This card is, it's just phenomenal. It's just phenomenal. Aramisaki on the other hand, 
I really, okay, so I'm a really big fan of this design philosophy and the direction that this card is sort of pointing in. And this feels like a card that will be very synergistic with Kamigakari moving into the future when we get more sets that you are like, okay, just killing. Um, but at the moment, I just don't think this card is very good. Uh, it's a cool concept. And I look forward to a time when this card is better. Uh, but at the moment, I don't think it's very strong. At the moment. This is the best card in Apprentice. This card is also pretty decent. It only deals with fields, so at the moment it does feel like a stronger sort of sideboardy card. But it does have obstacle, which is scary. And it is 5 attack. And, uh, you know, 5 attack, pretty good. Um, sorry, I, uh, I, it, it, I did, it did just occur to me that I grossly misread uh, obstacle. Um, it's only combat damage, so of course they can just remove it. Um, which is my bad, uh, makes it a bit worse. Apologies for my uh, misinterpretation of Kamigakadi there for a moment, though I knew there was a reason. Anyway, not the point. Uh, card's good, but uh, for it to be really, really worth it, uh, you, you do need to be in a meta with lots of field cards. This is one of the most slept on amazing cards in the game, I think. Uh, so just popping a card in the defensive zone is really good because a lot of decks we're starting to see a lot of night decks in particular are reliant on keeping something there and that's how they're not going to just die to a very aggressive apprentice player here you have the out to that it's also a warrior which means that you can use this for genesis something uh, now at the moment uh, i don't imagine you would be doing that particularly often but potential for in the future. Yeah, this is one of the most slept on really, really strong cards. Keep this card in mind. Kongadai. This is a interesting one. I'm, I'm, um, I've actually made a video on a lot of the cards I'm talking about. Uh, you should check out my Gate Ruler Guide playlist. But uh, yeah, this card is very, very strong. Double attack, charge shield, uh, synergistic with Wonderverse uh, in terms of emergency recombination. Because this is a robo synergistic with all the military stuff because it's military uh, and the fact that you can make this from your deck with first and second and then you can use this to recycle itself and second which are both counters so you sort of see the idea of the deck um the way it's balanced is they're all high level so you are forced to uh, sort of compensate for that but the card is definitely good and very much worth building around that's a valid thing to do and it's pretty good I have made a whole video about this card and why I think you should run four. I'm not going to repeat any of the stuff here. I'm just going to link you to that video and I suggest you check it out. This card is amazing. Vanillas are really good. It's also a beast. This card is also very good, but a bit restrictive at the moment. Uh, it's a beast, which is important. It's Apparition. And, you know, at the moment, Apparition is kind of doesn't doesn't seem too strong in my testing. But I think there's strong future potential for it, and it's definitely something to keep in mind. Also, the name of the ability is a throwback to my favourite deck of the early... Uh, of, of 100. This is the second machine I was talking about, the Masarau engine. Um, you, can, you can see what it does, and you can sort of see how that, that, that would work together. Uh, obviously, very strong in Masarau. Garbage outside. This is a really good card. Um... Fundamentally, turning 25% of your counters into a heal too is really nice, and uh, of course, if you're playing this in Apprentice, when you can just slam it down for free, and you don't feel bad at all about uh, driving it. So yeah, I think this is a really strong Apprentice card. In Knight at the moment, it feels pretty air. But uh, yeah, it's a good card. Definitely a good card. <sighs> so my testing experience with this has not been as good as others. I've been, I've, people have been telling me that this is one of the best cards in the game. That has not been my experience at the moment. However, I am just gonna chalk that up to a lack of experience with the card and me just being bad. Because in principle, this should be really, really strong. 
Um, and being 3 HP puts it out of the range of a lot of the really cheap, easy removal. So I'm gonna go ahead and say this is probably really good and you should definitely test it. I think it's at least good. N unsure on one of the best cards in the game, as I've been told, but good for sure. Warrior trade as well for Genesis Summon. Thought I'd zoomed out on everything, but uh, not perfect. All things must die. Uh, I was, I really, really thought this, I, I really liked this card when I first read it, but now I'm going, eh. I think this card on stuff with charge shield is going to be cracked, but at the moment there is like very little charge shield stuff because this gives something till the end of the turn. So at the moment, I'm not a big fan of this card and I've cut it from basically all the decks that I'm playing, but it is a card that will so easily come back in once we start getting more charge shield things. So I'm just, it's, it's, it's lodged away in the back of my mind as a thing that's going to come back out eventually. Strong future potential, pretty meh at the moment. This card again is uh, very interesting. So Apparition 312, good stats. And giving all your Apparition Defender, eventually this card's going to be super stupid. At the moment it's already pretty good. Giving everything Defender, it's a very good effect. I mean if nothing else this literally is a 312 one cost Defender. That's good. <laughs> That's good. So, uh, yeah, strong card. 442 Vanilla, card is good. Also military. The first dimensional defense battle. <sighs> so, I'm still unsure how I feel about this card. Uh, it's intercept till the end of the battle. So when you use this, you're just going to kill the thing that's attacking you, and that can swing the game. Uh, if your opponent is, if your if your opponent sort of is unable to deal with your board after that, and you've just killed like a major attacker, and it just ends their turn, that is game swinging. The sort of downside of this card is you really do need to be set up for it to be super strong, um, and fundamentally your opponent can just effect remove the thing that you target, and that will be a feels bad. But by and large, I just think this card's really good. And I'm going to go ahead and say it's one of the best attack counters. And I'm sticking with that. Also, oh, come on. All sides of purification. So, uh, this pops, feels, or sets, and as a counter, you can play it. This is really good because there's just not much popping. Uh, as I've said, I th think in almost every single one of these videos, there's really not much feel like set popping, and I think people are sleeping on the power of that, because a lot of the time, something like this is essentially going to be like dealing your opponent three extra damage, because um, a lot of the time, the thing they've got set down, if uh, set, is going to be reduce the next damage to zero. A lot of the time. My, you might high roll, and it's something like a Space Arthur, you might hire on to something like a zap 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 and you don't have a board for them to use it on buster kong as well a uh, buster arm as well these are all options that you can pop with this i really think people are sleeping on just how strong this card is because it's really good this is strictly speaking the best reduced to zero in the game because it reduces any damage to zero but it does cost one so cracked an apprentice a little bit more restrictive in night but still really good 100 Eye Spirit, um, so, like, in theory, this should be really cool, because, oh, well, I just get a free extra unit, but, um, this just feels like a worse version of the things that set stuff, a worse version of the things that set stuff, because it feels like there's just going to be a lot more cards that you want to set, um, in, in Apprentice, because it's obviously Overdrive, uh, than level zero apparitions, so, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure this is not amazing at the moment. Future potential is there. And you can imagine making a whole board off of this. And uh, the other one, the level two. You can get, you, you know, you can, uh, it's a 232 vanilla, and that's pretty good. Uh, yeah, you know, level zero, two strike vanilla, pretty good. Three HP, not easy to immediately burn down either. This card's very strong. Very, very, very strong. I really don't like this card. I really, really, really don't like this card at all. 
outside of like a Mimi deck where you run a billion counters and you actually want to be dealing yourself damage. So you're okay dealing yourself and you're okay dealing it to the opponent. Outside of that, I'm not a fan. This is the best familiar. The best one. Period. Uh, this card is amazing. Warrior, military, robo, level zero, that can potentially plus you a set. It's pretty good. It's really good. Invitation of Strength. So this is a plus two plus two. Uh, we saw one of these in Atlas. This is nice. Potentially good. Um, I personally tend to find that the plus attack is not that useful. Uh, generally speaking, it's the plus HP that's particularly good, and there's another card I'd rather run over this, but I do appreciate the versatility, and I'm sure there'll come a point in the future when I'll be preferring this over the uh, extra boost in just one stat. It's a very nice option to have. Uh, this card is really, really nice against things like Zap Zap Zap. This is uh, one that's definitely going to be seeing, uh, we're starting to see Japan, uh, a lot more people play this card. Uh, appreciating just how valuable it is in going in, in making a zap 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 basically a useless card because it's a zap your opponent is gonna get greedy they're gonna board wipe you and you're gonna flip the purification right and they're gonna go oh my zap 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 that was meant to just swing the whole game and just did nothing this will happen the cards very good bunbuku chagama I do not think this card is very good Unless being a level 0 apparition ends up being very important in the future. At the moment, not a fan. Yamata no Orochi. So this is a dragon, so you can Genesis summon this. Apparition, so somewhat relevant. Zero six one. so you're just chucking this thing in the center, and 6 HP is big, especially on a 2. And once per turn, at normal timing, you can just deal 2 damage to an enemy unit. I think this card is really nice. I personally am struggling to justify fitting it into lists at the moment, but I think when a when Apparition gets more fleshed out in set 2, we're going to see this be a lot better. And considering this is a set 2 card that has been printed as an early promo, that's probably intentional. On to the starter deck stuff. So, uh, this is a 442 Defender. Military Robo, very relevant for the trading. Um, don't really care too much about the fact that this is a defender. That's nice. You more care about the fact that this is a Robo and thus you can do cracked bullshit with emergency recombination. This card's pretty good. <laughs> also the exact same art as uh, the first international battle. Masarao First Machine. This is probably the only Masarao you'd want to run outside of a Masarao deck. It is a uh, two cost double attacker when you drive it. And uh, that's essentially a 641, kind of. A 641 military robo for two. It's probably good. You know, it's a better 6, uh, six It's a better 341 because it's. I suppose it's kind of like a 642. Kind of. And a 642 for two, we'd be like, well, that's cracked. So I think it's pretty good, but uh, um, also level space <laughs> is really hard to justify this outside of decks where you really want it. 342 vanilla military robo um it's a vanilla you are losing an attack in exchange for the military and the robo traits and generally speaking you actually won't be able to fit this in um because there are other things you'd want to play in those contexts but uh this card is strong and it's something to keep in mind this is uh really really good apparition beast relevant traits five two one it's five attack level zero this can clear so much stuff uh two hp means it's susceptible to a lot of removal though so in the beast deck this will be a six three one and that is very scary uh this card's really good and i think you're like it's just just pure value for stats it's one of the best value cards in the game um and you know i think it's, it's kind of a no-brainer to, to give a go at least i think it's a very very strong card uh, another two strike level zero, and this is a warrior military, so good traits and, uh, you know, valuable strike. If you were going to build just a beat down me go face, me have strike deck, you would probably be playing something like this. This card is low key really fucking annoying. Uh, buffing all your HP by plus one. This can mean that you will have a field with like two of these and something in the center. These will both have four HP and the thing in the center will be like seven or eight HP. Your opponent is just gonna 
just hate existing. They're just gonna test it. Trust me, this card's really, really, really annoying and uh, a big part of a more defensive build of red, blue, good stuff. Don't sleep on this card. Yobiko, in my opinion, this is just a worse version of the Robo one because the traits are less valuable. Um, but I'm sure, uh, you know, in Apparition in particular, this will be really good. And in the future, we will probably see this be uh, a lot better as well. Moment of offense and defense. So this just gives intercept until the end of the battle. Uh, I think this is worse than the first interdimensional battle because um, at least with that, you are buffing the attack. So it's more likely to be able to just kill the thing that's attacking it. This is still good. Like, if you did this on a Kamaitachi Joe, that's killing a lot of stuff, and your opponent's gonna go, ah, yikes. But, um, you know, it is easy to play around this kind of stuff by using your ruler to attack. And fundamentally, this is less versatile than International Defense Battle, um, though it is free. So, I think the card is good. I don't think it's broken or anything. I think it's pretty good. I really, really like this card. The plus 3 HP, I think it's really valuable. Uh, opponents will be playing around like plus one or plus two HP a lot of the time, like they'll be kind of considering it. Plus three though usually requires such an over commitment that they will be willing to take the risk of you not having it. And when you do have it, that's really, really valuable. This card plus like a five HP unit in the center can very, very frequently mean you go, you don't take any damage on the opponent's turn. So worth keeping that in mind. And a lot of the time it can even mean that you get to keep the unit in the center. Uh, Byakuya, so this is a 2-1-1 defender. Uh, it's military, but personally I don't think this card is very good. 4-2-1, uh, on the island apparition. I think this is just strictly worse. Kamaitachi Joe, I can't really think of a reason you would want to play this outside of the Oni the Island trait, which may be relevant in the future, but at the moment really isn't. And the final card for this review is going to be Dragon-type battle weapon, Honoi Kazuchi. Uh, military dragon, so good traits there, 542, pretty crappy stats, but the uh, the burn effect is good. Personally though, I mean it's really strong, this is the thing, right? Like you buff this with a few guns and gold armory, and suddenly you're looking at on attack burning 4 to 5. That's pretty scary. If you were able to give this charge shield somehow, this would be a build around card, I think. But at the moment, it's I. It's I. And that's it. That is the card review for all of the Yomajin front cards from the first few uh, bits of sport for Gabriel. So I hope you guys found this video informative and helpful. If you did, please leave a like on the video. Please comment your thoughts and anything you'd like me to make any Gabriel content. I'm uh, always reading those comments and uh, taking uh, feedback on board. And uh, yeah, like the video, subscribe to the channel, check the links, Discord server, follow me on Twitter, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Cheers.